Hi, hi everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I'm very happy to to have you all in this uh, in session for today. And this is the first presentation, group one of the graduates from the second cohort of NEPULA. The NEPULA then program is a program uh, designed to make uh, researchers and academics uh, familiar with open science and reproducible research practices. And yeah, this is the second cohort. Uh, the program is uh, part of the OLS and, and NASA COPS Open Science uh, 101 uh, curriculum. And, and I think this is the first time that we are meeting in, in, in in, in person, I, or I, should I say, uh, on, on live, on Zoom. Uh, in the previous uh, in sessions and calls, I was working behind the scenes. And yeah, my, my name is uh, and Ahmed Unshur. I am from Somalia. I am a psychologist and data scientist, and I'm also a graduate from the NEPULA program. I was part of the cohort, first cohort, the pilot cohort of this program, and I'm very happy to see today the second uh, cohort uh, in graduating from this program. And uh, Irene, as Irene mentioned, uh, this call is being recorded. And I, I, I also have to, to remind us our code of conduct. And yeah, uh, we, have, uh, we have a code of conduct and community participation guidelines. And, and always we encourage everyone to participate and are committed to build community for all. So please uh, be considerate and respectful. And also if you experience or, or witness any unacceptable behavior or any other concerns, please report by contacting the organizers. And I think that's it. I, I think there is uh, nothing else that I'm forgetting about the, the welcoming part here. Yeah. So without further ado, we will start uh, the uh, project presentations. And in this call, we have uh, five presenters. And then we will start with the first presenter, uh, Katrina. Uh, hello, Katrina. Hello. Uh, are, you, are you ready to, to share your screen if you are uh, going to, to present? Yes, I will How try to share now. Well. Yeah. Please uh, uh, go ahead, welcome. Do you see the screen already? Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's so, in presenter mode. Awesome. Yeah, just a short introduction of myself. Um, actually, this month I started a new position as lecturer at the Berlin School of Business and Innovation. And uh, um, I'm giving lectures in global strategic management. Uh, but uh, I am. My research is mainly focused on uh, sustainability and the SDGs. So um, I graduated in University of Bonn, and I have done some research and consultancy. I have also worked in the Hamburg University of Applied Sciences and uh, Bielefeld uh, University of Applied Sciences. Uh, I have done several uh, present uh, publications, uh, which uh, you can see here, mainly for the SDGs. And I have marked in yellow the publications that are not open access. Uh, so these are part of my PhD, actually, the three, the three publications that I did as part of my PhD studies. And at the time of my studies, I uh, couldn't uh, find my way to do it open access uh, because I didn't have so much uh, knowledge about that but also that the i didn't have funds for research for that and uh, so they are still uh, like closed access and uh, i sometimes take like uh, emails that they tell me can you provide the pub the publication <laughs> so uh so but after that uh, i have done some more uh, publications and uh, they uh, we managed to do open access because uh, there are uh, for for example springer nature uh, nature in germany has this um, agreement with uh, some institutions and universities that the institutions pay the processing fee for the journal. Uh, so uh, my interest in this uh, program also was uh, more or less related to the open science data and publications. Uh, so for the key lessons, um, 
I uh, I would say first that uh, open I why do I like to to do open science publications because uh, uh, open results is good that uh, open science principles increase the quality but also so the others can use that. And uh, it's important also to share knowledge for sustainability and SDGs, which are the focus of my research. It's good that this knowledge can be used also by students, etc. cetera. Uh, also for getting citations and uh, other researchers can also advance the results of the study. They can build on up from there. So, uh, about this uh, this program, I would say I was very interested in session nine, open results, open access publications and uh, preprints. So I also um, happened to, to, to get new knowledge and information about open science, open access publications, uh, open methodology, open peer review, et cetera, as it also presented in this uh, uh, figure here that, uh, taken from the lecture. And uh, so I learned there that there are different forms of open access, but also uh, it was an increase in pre-print submissions, which I haven't used by now. So uh, I would like to, to implement this. I would like to be focused more in pre-prints and to try to find a way there, but also to peer review open access uh, uh, is increasing. So also in uh, when I do reviews myself sometimes uh, to try to prove it, to, to try to do it like open access. So also the interesting things to know is that through ResearchGate, we should be careful not to share the PDFs that are not really not open access because that might be a conflict of interest. Oh, so yeah. Uh, the last slide. Uh, so uh, there are problems with uh, open access. There are high costs sometimes for publication in open access. It's a long time for peer review. So it's maybe it's a good way out to explore this possibility of preprints, but there are some journals that they don't accept that. I am so doing some two guest editor special uh, issues on sustainability. Uh, so it's the sustainability of, uh, of AMD, AMD PI, which also offers some discounts for open access publications. So there are new forms of business models for that. And it's also Springer Nature, one another editing collection that I am doing, which we are accepting publications and some institutions in Germany, but maybe also elsewhere, they can offer like, uh, they have an agreement with this uh, journal so they can publish open access paid by the institution or by the individual. So that was my presentation. <laughs> And thank you for uh, allowing me to follow this program. It was very interesting. And uh, I hope we will have access to the presentations even after the program. So whenever we need something, we just can go here and. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. And you have completed on, on time. I am seeing <laughs> Irina raise her hand. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Irene, uh, welcome. You wanted to say something? No, good, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, Katrina. Thank, thank you. you. And it is uh, very uh, important to see that the participants of this uh, in Nebula programs, it is something that I've seen in while I was participating in the first cohort in Open Science is a big umbrella. And when we went up in, obviously we'll find uh, some topics within open science that they are focused on, they are more interested uh, on. And, in, and I can see that in your uh, presentation that you mainly focus it on open, open results and preprints. Mm -hmm. uh, I think now we have time uh, for uh, questions. If there are any questions or comments from the participants, please feel free to raise your hand to to uh, open your mic or also write with type in the in the ether pad. Yeah. Can take one or two questions live if there's someone who who would like to, to ask a question or or uh, provide a comment. Welcome. Also, with in, in the etherpad, uh, we have we have uh, 
uh, if you go for if you go in on line 40, 49, and also if you have uh, any one some way that you can you can provide help or support for for, the, for Katrina or also for the other presenters, you can write your comments in there. And also you can write question lists on line 51 for uh, presenter for the first presenter, Katrina. Uh, Aya, Aya raised her hand. Welcome, Aya. You are you are still muted, Aya. Hello, Aya. Yeah, uh, now you. Uh, I'm Welcome, sorry. Aya. This is Zahar. Uh, I I have uh, an internet. Oh, sorry, sorry, Sahar. With yeah. the, another device. Okay, uh, I will correct my name. Don't worry. Okay. No so yeah, that was such an amazing presentation and it's a pleasure to get to know you, Katrina. My question is because you have already got your PhD, uh, congratulations. But how, how did you manage to, to challenge the, the status quo? Because we know that when we are advocating for open science practices, um, there is like certain areas uh, we we need to come in uh, a, a direct contact with the status quo. So how did you manage to do that? I hope the question is clear. Do you mean after my PhD or during your PhD and and uh, after that? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, when I started my PhD, my focus was on uh, SDGs, and that was the year two thousand sixteen. The 2030 agenda was just adopted and there were very little research about the SDGs. was hardly at the beginning any research to cite. Uh, but then now the research for SDGs increased and uh, it is uh, encouraged actually to be like open access. And as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, my three articles were not open access during the PhD. But after that, I also got more familiar with the system and could find a way to, to continue with open access. That's really amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sahar. Thank you, Katrina. Any other questions or comments? Oh, okay. So please, uh, anyone, give a round of applause, a big round of applause to Katrina for uh, presenting, for presenting uh, their presentation. Thank you very much. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now uh, we will uh, move to the next presenter, uh, Gibran. Uh, hello, Gibran. I, hello. I hope I'm, I am... I am pronounce your name correct. So as you wish, there is a lot of pronunciations. I, I already know. Yeah. <laughs> right. um, welcome, welcome, Gibran. Uh, you, you, you can start sharing your screen if you have a presentation to share. All right. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see uh, a map of the world. The All right. Blog. Yeah. So can I start it? Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, I just prepare something for mom. So that's me when I was a child. That's my place. I'm from Brazil. It's a place called Paraíba, which is in the, in the east part of Brazil. And this is the place where I'm based right now in Mexico, San Luis Potosí. It's also a very beautiful place. I just love this. And I'm working in the IPSIT, which is based to the National Center of Supercomputer. And I'm using this partnership to rule my models. Right now I'm doing my PAG. So I'm trying to connect the virus, the, the vectors and the hostess to create a map and to create a list of regions that can be endangered with diseases, mainly between these interactions. And this is the type of models that I use to create it, connected with the co-occurrence of species and disease, and some of 
landscape, landscape variables that you can use, like the Kobo, even climate change projections. But I started to make a real work with private, so we didn't know where some endangered primates could be. And I just did a lot of expeditions, in indigenous lands and also rural lands. And I started working with these lands. And in this landscape, we just found this, these two species. They are both endangered. And this is my pic my pictures too. And I we also found this these species, but it's not so endangered, but it's very interesting to know how they work in community, just to know more about how they are distributed. So I, I was working with the, the indigenous people from this land because they was like guiding me during my expeditions. And so I started to return so to them and I work with them about the, the use of plants from the community. And it was very interesting work. It was a way to, to do open science, but to connect, communicate it to them. And also what was happening with the primates in the nearby forests in this place. So it was a really great experience also to dealing with community. It's my main work here in my master degree. I published some works, but uh, it's my, my last work. It's with models too. So. I migrated also to programming languages, something nearby what I'm doing right now in my PhD. So I created models to the future to verify the status of the communities and how to be the damage in the future. So in the green colors here, we have that most of species will lose the stability habitats for the future. And most of the communities will become more similar in the future too. And the body mass will increase because most of the small species cannot reach the suitable habitat. So they, you lose the, the areas around these regions named cutting this semi-arid region. And I had the opportunity to visit the camp, this, the field work and collect some animals at the same time to use the, the list of species that in the, in the future. And they the, you lose the, the, the distribution is the left side the right side, just the gain and the colors, the mark, the, the log board mass. And I just got engaged also in a project named Nexus Katinga. It was a really good work to communicate with rural farmers or small stakeholders to keep the, the lifestyle and to understand how the productivity is associated with biodiversity and with the landscape and the management of the land. It was a very interesting work because a lot of people in this region, they used to live all the wild, but they decided to just come back to their lands to have this quality of life and this lifestyle. So we do not have desert in Brazil and it's a, a problem because we are created by human activities. And right now we're just trying to reach out the, the people interested in this and to make the different associations in schools, and also visiting them in the farmer. And we are trying to create a resilient community, not only for this place, but for my career. And I was honorable mention in some programs and I also received some awards and about climate and things like that. And I got a lot of networks for this. And right now I'm just trying to reach out uh, the maximum of knowledge that I can in here in the open science, and I'm very glad and pleased to know you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabriel. That was a wonderful presentation that uh, combined a number of activities. Uh, you can see from the data intensive uh, research uh, using different tools and technologies from GIS to, to in laboratory research. And also your presentation reminds me of the care principles within open science and in the, the activities that you're doing now, and even the outreach and community awareness are very, very important. Uh, thank you, Gibran, for the presentation. Uh, if there are uh, questions or comments uh, from the from the uh, members, welcome. As usual, we can we can 
uh, yeah, turn our mic on or if there are questions you can also feel free feel free to write it in the in the ether bag yeah i was just explaining how to do kyperians and things like that but all good. thank you <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you, man. Irene asked a question in the chat, uh, in your experience, how is it different to communicate science to communities than to scientific audiences? Uh, I guess we need to chop the language, mainly. Because sometimes you are just full of academic and informal talking, and we are going to communicate it with people. I I I will recommend that we are like locals, or we must be between them because we just understand how they perceive the they they land, how they perceive life, and it's also too much connected with the language. So. What I used to try to do is not show my formal and correct way to talk. You know, I just try to talk like them. And mainly, uh, I I know that most of my work, I didn't did this step of going before in the communities and to ask them what they need. But at the same time, we must like try to connect what we are doing and the, the lifestyle and what they need. So what I'm trying to do is really listen to them, you know, not only listen in, in the aspect of the, the CDT divulgation, but to listen to listen to their life, you know, the, the, the histories, the, the way they live, the way they do the things. And all, all these things are, are really important because we also think that we, the way we do the things are correct because we are scientists, but m most of those people are doing the difference in their lands and acting like a, a local leader. And they have a lot of knowledge that we use to overestimate it, but they are doing more than us sometimes. And that's it. I hope so. I, did, I answered your question. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Yeah, but that was a, a wonderful presentation. Uh, please, uh, everyone, give a big round of applause to, to Gibran for, for presenting. Mm, thank you. I think now we will move to the third presenter on our list. Uh, and we have Edmond. Edmond, uh, Edmond will present. And next, uh, hello, Edman. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Uh, you already started the presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for giving me the floor. Uh, first of all, uh, let me know to let me to thank the team organizer of this uh, uh, session and uh, my presentation. Uh, is uh, divided into uh, three parts. The first, uh, we will talk about, uh, uh, to, I'm going to present to myself. And uh, in second part, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how, what, I, uh, what I've get during this uh, uh, several sessions. And the third and last part, uh, let's talk about uh, my next step about uh, Research after this uh, uh, cohort, after this uh, less uh, living course. Uh, next slide. So, um, my name is uh, Chires Edmond Clark, and I'm from Madagascar. Uh, Madagascar, maybe uh, most of us uh, don't uh, know yet uh, this, uh, uh, my country. Uh, it is uh, a big island uh, localized uh, investor of Africa. And uh, 
My country is very, very rich in natural resource as a forest ecosystem. And uh, uh, he's be part of uh, 10 hotspot uh, biodiversity in the world. So uh, I'm geography by training. Uh, I'm the grad the PhD in geography uh, at the University of uh, Antananarive. Uh, I work at the Ministry of uh, the Environment and the Sustainable Development. And uh, I work also at the University of Fianaratsu and uh, Antananarive. Next slide. So during this uh, course in open data, so it was opportunity uh, for me uh, to know about uh, open data. Uh, excuse me, because uh, I just sent a new version of a presentation because uh, there are uh, some mistakes. I would like to write open data. And uh, I, uh, I got, I've got uh, how to define the definition of uh, open data, how to use it, and uh, we learned about uh, Genodog, GitHub, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it was a great opportunity for me to change and to have a more discussion about this uh, subject. Uh, next slide. Uh, so for uh, the future, I plan to use uh, this uh, open data for my uh, research. Uh, I'd like to highlight, but uh, my research is focused on uh, ecological integrity uh, of uh, forest ecosystem. And uh, I, I, I said that Madagascar is uh, very rich in uh, uh, forest uh, uh, ecosystem. And uh, the local population community, uh, we live around the, the forest, have uh, generally a low level of education. And uh, I plan to develop uh, a tool uh, to, to highlight the knowledge traditional related to the biodiversity and the biophysics. And uh, as I uh, said earlier, I work at the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development. So uh, there is a link uh, between ecological integrity and the uh, payment for ecosystem service because uh, payment for payment for ecosystem service make us to to uh, improve the ecological integrity level. So uh, I think, but. Uh, I think I finished my presentation and thanks to the uh, course. Uh, we will have opportunity uh, to follow uh, 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 English uh, uh, this course. Uh, uh, in person. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Edmond. Uh, that was uh, a great presentation. And it's also a very uh, been amazing to see that you have a uh, number of roles, uh, both within academia and also within the, the government institutions. And, and we as uh, open science practitioners can have a big and, and real impact in whether it is in conducting the scientific research, uh, whether it is uh, building awareness and also influencing policies and, 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 and programs with regard to open science. And, and this is, I think, also very, very important consider and yeah but that was that was good uh, i think uh, if we have uh, one or two questions uh, for uh, edmund and the presentation that uh, they presented we can al always uh, and turn on the mic and 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 ask question or comment or uh, you can also write it in the in the ether bag. Uh, 
Yes, Sahar. Go ahead. Welcome. Um, thank you. My question is, uh, how do you think the use of open data can uh, change your 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 major? Because you said in, in your next step, you are planning to use open data more. So how do you think that can, can make a difference or an impact? Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much for this question. As uh, I said earlier, uh, Malagasy uh, uh, people have generally low level in uh, education and knowledge about the forest ecosystem environment. So uh, open data can help me to share uh, my research related to the uh, ecological integrity. And uh, at this research, um, I will develop uh, a tool uh, focused on uh, uh, focused on the use of uh, five sensor organ to assess uh, forest ecosystem uh, uh, at the natural forest, of course. And uh, after that, uh, I, I, I plan to create a, a website to self uh, the research, my research results and uh, how to, to help our researcher to use and to exploit uh, my research result. I think uh, uh, I respond to your question. Thank you. Oh, yes, you did. Thank you so much and uh, best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Edman. And it is amazing to hear that you are already thinking about uh, the ways that you will share the data with uh, with uh, other people that will use it in the future that you're thinking of also using your, or uh, creating design a website and on uh, open repositories like like Zenodo and also uh, the data and the specific repositories are also very very useful and one thing uh, to add uh, it also is that there are differences in terms of the the available infrastructure and know-how and resources uh, between, between let us say, the global north and the global south. Uh, I am also from, uh, from Africa, I'm from Somalia. So I think in a number of countries uh, within Africa, or generally the continent can benefit from open science practices. And this, I think this can accelerate scientific research, this can accelerate uh, in, creating positive impact. And this thing is, is also something that is uh, uh, appearing as a theme within this uh, uh, the group that, that that's presenting uh, their uh, project this, uh, this uh, session, uh, focusing from uh, sustainable development to goals, to ecology and, and interacting with indigenous communities, and also thinking about uh, making data public and I think this is the essence of uh, open science and reproducible research practices. That science is not in behind behind bay walls and behind closed doors, but uh, all it is forms from research, from from data, from results, from methods. It's open, and this can accelerate. And in my in my view, for sure, this can accelerate a lot of things. Specifically, generally, but specifically for for uh, for a number of countries within the global global south. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Edmund. And please uh, give a big round of applause to, to Edmund for, for presenting their, their presentation. Uh, now I will give the mic to, to Irene. Irene. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, so our next presenter is Sahar. Sahar, um, are you ready to present? Oh, yes, I'm ready. Thank you, then. Uh, Hi. Hi. From the kitchen. <laughs> That's okay. Um, can I share my screen? Yes, please. Thank you.
Um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, okay, I uh, I will do it without the screen. Um, do you want to um maybe send them send them over email and I can share them if you want. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't want to delay you guys. Just give me a minute if I could okay. solve it. Uh, if I could solve it, yeah, then then. We can yeah, carry on. that's okay. Um, we're still on time. Um, and Ahmed, I really loved your, your reflections uh, just at this midpoint of the presentations, how you're kind of trying to synthesize um, the different learnings that participants have been sharing. And I'm also really surprised that at these connections between open science and sustainability. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this other presentations. And Sahar, we can see your slides. Maybe okay. um, we don't see them in presenter mode, but it's not a problem if you want to no, present I, I, Yeah, I can, I can fix that. What about now? Perfect. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, uh, okay so hi, everyone, uh, and thank you for this amazing program. It's such a pleasure to be with you here today. So, um, this is me, my name is Sahar, I'm from Sudan. I'm a pharmacy graduate. I graduated um, four years ago, so I don't know if you can <laughs> still consider me as a fresh graduate. Uh, I'm also a mother. to a little princess. Her name is literally princess. Her name is Amira, and Amira in Arabic is a princess. I'm interested in the field of um, genomic medicine and uh, pharmacogenomic. And um, uh, like after graduation for the last uh, four years, I was just focusing on um, uh, being a mother. So, Uh, um, um, I still have only my bachelor degree, but I'm planning to pursue my higher degrees. Uh, I'm also a peer review champion, and I, I want to tell you a little bit about my experience and how open science values changed my perspective. So uh, I, I was uh, a peer review champion with Daniela and, um, and uh, Vanessa. And um, they are advocating for uh, uh, open uh, open peer review. So uh, I I only heard of the concept of open science uh, one year ago, and this concept literally changed um, changed my life and, and uh, my perspective because during college, doing research and thinking about being a researcher was <laughs> such like. Uh, like a nightmare, like research is so demanding and you are a mother, so you cannot be a researcher. And here in Africa and in Sudan, we are facing a lot of, um, a lot of problems. So uh, the, the, the field of, um, of research is not that welcoming. So yeah, after I, I learned about open science and how all the, the values and concepts and uh, And uh, and different sectors of open science, how how they can help us, especially as Ahmed said uh, in uh, in Africa, I like all I wanted to do was um, to keep advocating for open science. So during um, so during the, the program after we we end, uh, I'm telling here I'm telling you about my my current work. We were asked to conduct a, a workshop, a similar workshop, to 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 keep advocating for open science. 
And I, I decided to do that workshop for undergraduates and fresh graduates. And um, at the end of the, of the session, uh, we collaborated together to write a humble and constructive um, feedback for uh, about a preprint. And the, the comments I was receiving at the end of the session from many undergrads and uh, fresh graduates, like after this, we feel like we are part of this, like we are included. Um, so that was a practical example how open science and um, and implementing open science values can create a welcoming and inclusive environment for everyone. So like, especially for us uh, early graduates and undergrads, because we are still trying to feel like we, we fit here. So, so yeah, that's, that's why uh, I, I decided to join uh, this program as well to, to, keep learning and, and keep developing. Um, um, I still have a lot to learn, obviously, but like at the end of this program, I like I, I still a huge fan of open science and I still want to keep advocating for open science and telling everyone around me in my community that um, open science can fix, can and will fix a lot of problem. Um, uh, researchers, especially from uh, from Africa and from uh, and their developed um, country, can um, can face. So, open science is, can can and will provide a solution for that. And um, one like um, a session that was really amazing. Uh, all the sessions uh, obviously were amazing and mind blowing. But the Git uh, Hub session was um, was so important because oh that's my time <laughs> okay, i'm sorry but so the github session yeah that and the importance of tools and learning about uh, about tools and for my next step i'm going to keep learning and advocating for open science thank you so much and that's it <laughs> Thank you, Sahar. Um, that was a very enthusiastic presentation, and um, I really appreciate you sharing your experience, not only with this program, but with your previous um, experience as a pre-review champion. Um, so I have a question, uh, actually, the same that you asked in the beginning. How do you advocate for open science in a context where it is not very uh, welcoming for new and disruptive science practices? Um, what are the challenges that you have faced and what are the uh, um, achievements that you have also accomplished? Um, actually, I have faced many challenges because um, like people, uh, open science is a new concept for for people around me and for my for the research community in general in in Sudan, so a lot of people be like, but the the status quo is all we know. So what why do you want to change it? So I have to to start from the beginning. Like okay, we, we are facing problem and we need to create a more inclusive uh, uh, environment for for the research. So. The, uh, this is how open science can uh, can help us, especially with the concept of open peer review. Like everyone was saying, so you want everyone to give his or her opinion about my preprint, about my research. And we were like, yes, people will be trained and they will give you a very constructive and humble feedback. And that can um, can uh, can benefit your research and the research in field in general. So yeah, people were were amazed, but at the same time, yeah, they 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 accept it well, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, um, Ahmed, do you have a question? Uh, yes, Arene, it is uh, not a question, but uh, uh, a comment. Uh, it is uh, something that I I am seeing now in my country in Somalia and. And by the way, Sahar, I have studied and worked in Sudan, in Khartoum, Ooh. Sudan. So it is also something that I have experienced in, in Sudan. And then there's always a kind of mixed 
uh, reactions of some uh, researchers and and especially within within academic institutions and research institutions, there is uh, a welcoming attitude, but at the same time, there is a lot of resistance that this is not the way that we've done things, especially, and also there is a kind of misunderstanding about open science practices uh, in terms, for example, about open peer review and peer prints that uh, some researchers uh, believe if they if they publish a preprint that they will get scooped, but in fact it is yes. the opposite, that you will have a persistent identifier that that says that that certifies that you've done this first. So it is something that is common uh, within mm -hmm. our communities. And I will also share within within the chat there is a new, uh, it's not new this topic, but it's about, I think it's one and a half. Uh, years old and in a network called African Reproducibility Network. Uh, oh, Aaron, and, uh, I know you. Yeah. Aaron, he, 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 yes, you know Aaron. about Aaron. That's awesome. Yeah. So I will share that network also in the, the website. I will share that in the chat. And they are an amazing community. Uh, there are also a community that's focused on, on research software engineering and, 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 and open science infrastructure, RSE Africa. Uh, nowadays, there are a lot of efforts uh, in terms of uh, taking the different ideas together and and creating the communities of practice within within our within our uh, institutions within 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 the continent. So, yeah, I, I just wanted to share that. Uh, I, I also see Gibran that they raised their hand. Welcome, Gibran. Thank you, Jules. Uh, at first, congratulations for your talk. It was a really nice talking, and I really admire the people with so much strong to to do their dreams, to realize what they want to do. Thank you. And there is a lot of challenges, and I do recognize it because my mother was also a mother with her challenges, and she just just taught me a lot of good things and I, my, my question is more about that because here in brazil i here in brazil i'm mexico right now, but I, I i knew about a, a group of scientists named like woman science and i don't know if it, it's, it's not a question necessarily for you but it can be for anyone including iran too uh, if you know any initiative like that in your country and related with open science, because I guess there is a need to outreach also another woman scientist and to empower you and mainly in places we are dealing with more challenges, like you said before. So that's it. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, in, in my community, we have uh, an initiative called She in Science. It's not about open science in particular, but it's about um, uh, encouraging more women, especially in Africa, to, to, to pursue their career in, in, in science and research and academia. So, but it's, it's still a small initiative. Let's hear from the others. Amazing. I just shared with you two, two links. And uh, one is for this program, and the other is Dimensional Science. It's based on Washington, but they used to give a support for many for people from Brazil, but they also focus in the wild. And so if you have interest in, I know a lot of initiatives they used to do with you, human scientists. So congratulations and thank you all. Thank you. Um, these are the links that we're going to add to the notepad um, because they're these are like amazing resources, and I'm happy that um, these discussions are uh, you know happening at this at graduation. So please give um, Sahar a round of applause for this amazing presentation. Um, 
Yeah, thank you, Sahar, again. And we have one last presenter, that is um, Doma. Doma, are you ready to present? Yeah, yeah, I am here. <laughs> I have got a bit of cold, but I, yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Um, um, I have a short three slides, maybe let me share it first. <clears throat> can you see? <clears throat> it's loading. Yes, we can see your slides. Um, okay. Do you want to put them in presenter mode? Yeah, let me try it. That's perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, welcome everyone. And I was I was hearing the presentation from other um, presenters or other uh, participants. And yeah, so I somehow can relate to those challenges who are from the global south because I also come from there. So I'm from Bangladesh. So we do also have some challenges when we talk about open science. So I am Tamara Nishaha. Uh, right now I am working um, as a lecturer in in uh, in an university, which is Jahangir University in Bangladesh. And uh, my research uh, primarily focus on climate change and extreme weather events because we are very frequently get I mean, getting affected by floods and droughts. So we have uh, those. Uh, severe uh, disasters or impacts happening in, in our country. So I do uh, work a lot of, with uh, open data sets, mostly with satellite data sets like those available on Landsat and with European Space Agency. So I use them for my research and also sometimes I use data sets from um, ECMWF and other open data sets and the challenge for me is in Bangladesh we do not have uh, data sets which are openly available for our country for example if I want to use any kind of climatic parameters or any kind of field data sets in most of the cases uh, I need to buy those data sets or then, I mean and need to make formal request to buy them and um, there is a long formal procedure for that so that's very challenging sometimes. So I find it more convenient for us who are actually uh, working with global data sets. And that's why when I do use these data sets, I sometimes see that they do, I mean, they have a very good documentation procedure, especially uh, when I work with the CMWF data sets. So they have a very big page of documentation with every single parameters, every single uh, conventions they use. So I, I really like those kind of documentations and I understand that that has a, um, I mean, that needs a very big time for commitments. So I was really interested to know more about those tools and skills that we really need to follow as a, uh, open I mean, researcher or scientist. So how can we really um, embed those practices in our daily uh, works? So that's why I was very much interested to, uh, and join this program. So there are uh, many things that I really learned from uh, from this uh, workshop or training. So there are many things. The first things maybe I would like to mention about documentation. So that matters a lot for us because when I use data from a secondary sources or uh, when I uh, buy data, especially from, uh, from any uh, government authority from my country, Usually that documentation is always missing. For example, when I work with meteorological data sets, sometimes the weather station was removed from there and there is no documentation at all. So that's very challenging for us as a researcher. So that kind of documentation really matters. So uh, uh, how to really uh, uh, develop that sort of awareness among, among those uh, authorities and researcher communities so they so that they follow those kind of, uh, I mean, uh, processes when they are download, I mean, preparing those data sets. And also another thing is the time, time commitment. Sometimes when we work in a certain way, we have our time, uh, I mean, limitations, we have our resource limitations, and sometimes we are uh, doing something so, so that we can deliver that uh, particular output within that time frame so in that case sometimes we do not have that time so that we can follow that open data principles and those factors into our work 
So that time commitment, I think the organization who are actually producing the, that sort of data and data and works, they need to uh, <clears throat> follow that open science principles and so that they can uh, accommodate some time into their daily works. I think that that need to be considered. Uh, and uh, as uh, I am working as a, a lecturer and also in my institute, we are uh, also having a youth mappers group. So they are really contributing towards uh, open mapping. So but they contribute to open street map. So they voluntarily, um, I mean, uh, digitize those, that is this roads, rivers, whatever uh, physical landscapes we have in our country. So to, they work on those platforms. So maybe I am trying to really um, uh, kind of educate and motivate them so that they uh, they do their works more ethically. Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> thanks, Irene. So yeah, that that I think that was it. And uh, to incorporate those learnings in my teaching and in my research, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Toma. Um, that was a really a kind of great presentation, and I loved your reflections about how practicing open science. It's not only about the technical bits, like uh, there are like time and resource constraints. And especially um, we have been discussing in the programs how all these open data practices are really good to implement. But then um, I think this reflection that you're bringing um, about how it, it takes time to incorporate these practices into the research. Um, and I'm curious, what are some kind of a strategies that you have found in advocating for the time that is needed to implement open science um, into your work? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's just something that's very difficult uh, to answer because that is something I am facing always. That's why I brought up that issue. So what happened in one of my uh, projects when I was working as a fellow, I mean, research fellow in Germany, so at that time I had to document my code, but my supervisor was, I mean, flexible enough. So he allocated two extra months for me so that the codes I produced after my works, I could actually document them in a proper way so that uh, afterwards the team could actually reuse that code. So I developed a tool for South Asia. So they wanted to use that for, for a global one. So the, they, they wanted that one to be reproduced. That's why they uh, actually allocated some extra time. I think that's that's how we need to uh, manage these kind of challenges. So we really need to acknowledge that officially, otherwise uh, for a person or a team, it's really difficult. Yeah, that's a great reflection again. Um... And yeah, taking the time at the beginning because it's um, it will save time later. But advocating for that initial time, it's really hard if it um, it, it falls on the responsibility of individuals or teams instead of uh, wider policies, even at the institutional level, right? Um, so, are there any other questions for Toma? Please feel, feel free to add them in the chat as well, and we can read them out loud. If not, I might have other question about um, how do you communicate, again, um, the benefits and the practices of open data with your students? So it's not just learning them, but also teaching them. So yeah, one strategy that I am really thinking about, so they, uh, as I have mentioned, and they are working on an open, I mean, voluntary platform, which is OpenStreetMap. So they have a group, it's called Youth Mappers. So uh, they really contribute on uh, digitizing those roads and river networks, which are, I mean, located in Bangladesh. But sometimes what is missing there that they do not do that ethically. Sometimes there is no actual road, I mean, located on that particular area, but they are still digitizing that just to minimize their, uh, I mean, work effort. So they are not doing that ethically or in a fair way. 
So I think that is something I need to really uh, give that message to them that be, be people are in future going to use that data because this is an open platform. So OpenStreetMap is widely used. So to give that right message so that they uh, really, I mean, uh, consider those kind of um, uh, not to make those errors. So I think that's that's very important to just practice in, in their real work. Yeah, thank you. Um, so there's a question in the chat. Um, Henry is asking, aside uh, from openness, uh, are your codes accessible? Um, I'm not sure if this means aside from open data, are your code, is your code accessible as well? So some of my codes are accessible, but not always, because uh, that also, I mean, depends on those organizational policies and funding policies. So that's important because I have to adhere with them as well, because uh, sometimes organization have, has their own license policies. So it depends on, on that. Ah, thank you. Well, um, please um, give Doma a round of applause for this amazing presentation, um, connecting teaching and policy and open data. Yeah, so- uh, Thank you, thank I, you everyone. Yeah. Thank you. So this is the end of the first group of presenters. Um, I'm just gonna check, is there anyone else who wants to present today that wasn't um, on the spreadsheet? Um, if yes, please um, let us know in the chat or uh, raise your hand. Um, I'm going to wait for a few more minutes. Um, and if not, we want to do a group photo. So, um, okay, I don't see anyone else who wants to present. Um, yeah, I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, but please stay for the group photo.